Hey everyone, welcome to the Hornet King channel, and in this video, I'll be removing a massive eastern yellow jacket colony that decided to make its nest in an arborvitae bush. This nest was so deep in the bush that as I started pulling the branches apart, they started swarming all over the place, and they were tacking and latching onto my arms and my face. So I removed this nest for the client and bring it back and feed it to my animals. Here's the video, check it out. I'm the Hornet King and I removed some incredible and insane wasp nests. All right, so we have, looks like, eastern yellow jackets inside of here. It's gonna be really interesting to get these guys out. The hermit keeps this bush nice and trimmed, because ironically, the wasps have been keeping this nice and trimmed. I'm curious to see where this goes. Let's see if we can take a peek inside the tree here. Oh, it's so thick back in there. Looks like it's going back in here. It's like nestled in all this stuff. I have a sense I'm going to be sucking up a bunch of arborvitae needles. Find out here in a minute. So this is Vespula macula frons, the eastern yellow jacket, which is typically a subterranean nest building yellow jacket species, which means they nest in the ground. But I have removed a lot of their colonies out from inside of cavities as well, like in wall spaces, ceiling spaces, attics, etc. And this being an arborvitae bush which is an evergreen bush, when they drop a lot of their dead needles, they land inside the interior of the bush, which creates this dense fodder. So the eastern yellow jackets treat this as if it's a subterranean nest. They built inside of all this fodder and start excavating it out as they build their nest bigger and bigger. However, since there's a lot of this fodder mixed in, it gets all intertwined with the nest. It made it really difficult to figure out exactly where the girth and the main part of the comb was inside of this space. So that was the interesting part when I started pulling these branches apart, that disturbed so much of the nest all at one time and they just started flooding out of this thing. So initially just trying to find a good place to put my vacuum nozzle and I pretty much just sat it up, like looped it around inside the branches so that way they really couldn't see it from the outside. And as the foragers come back from foraging, they fly right down into where the nozzle is inside of that little hole that they cut out. So once I start pulling things apart here and just vacuuming up where I think the nest might be, just pulling the branches away and bam, the swarm happens and all the fury.
So the main thing you have to do when you're dealing with a swarm of fury like this is to stay calm. So what I do is I just step back for a few minutes, leave the nozzle inside the bush, and let it just gather up as many of the swarming individuals and as many of the returning foragers as I can. And that really, really slows down the swarming so that way I can get back to removing the nest and not have a thousand of them all over me. I mean, they were all over my gloves, they were all over my veil, they were latched onto me, and there were some that were latched on me the rest of the entire removal. And I didn't actually notice them until I was done, and I looked down at my arm and there was a couple still latched to me. So I just kind of vacuum out, start pulling away some of the little branches and twigs, and that's when I started to notice, okay, there's the comb. It's down at the bottom. It's a little lower than I thought it would be, but since they didn't have like one distinct entrance way, they were kind of coming in and out of the fodder. They were coming in and out from like different little catacombs and holes and things. So it's really hard to tell exactly where to start aiming my vacuum nozzle to get most of the envelope out. And I knew I was going to get a ton of, of needles and stuff inside of the vacuum as well. Uh, I was really hoping that it wouldn't clog up because that, that's just a pain enough to stop in the middle of a removal to unclog the vacuum nozzle. But it does happen sometimes. So now this is the main part of the nest. This is where all, most of the comb is. And what you would think by the thousands that were swarming around and attacking me and ca attacking my camera is that this nest had to be about the size of a beach ball. But the thing is with eastern yellow jackets, they are the smallest yellow jackets that I deal with. So their nests are by girth are smaller, but they are packed with tons of yellow jackets inside of them. So they don't need a massive nest to be a massive colony. They are a massive colony with a smaller size nest in comparison to say German yellow jackets or bald faced hornets, etc. But this nest was just packed with larvae, packed with pupating adults. Pretty much of the empty cells that you see that are more towards the center of the nest, those ones have already hatched out. So I would say by, by this time of year, this nest probably had about 7,000 yellow jackets in it easy. And what you see in this video obviously isn't the entirety of the swarming that was happening. I did have to cut a lot of it out because it was really just putting the vacuum nozzle into the bush and just letting it run and run and run and run. Obviously that's not great for content, so I cut a lot of that out. But so the majority of what you were seeing in here, the initial attack and the, some of the heavy swarming, that was the most of it. But then that did last for about 15, 20 minutes while I just stood back and let the vacuum do its thing. So I'm just clearing off some of the more aggressive yellow jackets off the surface of the, of the nest and then bag it up and actually double bag it because they will chew through uh, bags on my way home. I think this was the last removal of the day, so I was coming back from Maryland. So it was about a 45 minute drive, 50 minute drive. So they didn't really get a chance to chew out completely. But So I just go inside the bush here and just vacuum out the majority of the envelope. There's no way I'm gonna get all of the little morsels and things out of the inside of this bush. Uh, so I did have to rely on using the black flag spider and scorpion spray just a spray inside of that fodder to deter any returning foragers who have no idea what just happened to keep them from coming back and trying to just linger inside of this bush. They would not be able to rebuild. There would be no chance of that happening. They may linger in the space a little bit longer if I don't spray it. So again, I'm just using that more as a deterrent than I am as an actual pesticide. So let the vacuum nozzle sit in the bush for a while and works like a charm every time. When you back away, they have no idea, unbeknownst to them, there's something in there to suck them up when they fly in, and they go in, they go right down into the vacuum nozzle. And after about 40 minutes, we're done. Okay, and that's it. All right, empty out the vacuum. The inside, how much to dump it out. All right, so you got the nest home. I'm going to suck up the remaining individuals inside the nest.
Get them out. Get them little birds. Oh, hey, do pooties. You can try some Cheetos, but I know you don't want it. Some left to go give to the birdies. Ooh, jumping birdie. Good birdies. <laughs> Hello, birdie. Hello, Ria the Ria. Bring you some more back. I'm gonna give some to the emus.
Spend an hour flipping that thing around. Give up on that nest over there, sweetie. Big fat booty. We can eat the queen. Can eat the queen? Hey, we eat the queen? Okay. Oh, Rhea the Rhea. Good Rhea the Rhea the Rhea the Booty. Oh, good Rhea. Where are you going, Rhea the Booty? She have her legs out? All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions for future videos or someplace you see me covered in an upcoming video, also drop in the comments. Let me know. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to check out this video, supporting my channel, and I'll catch you on the next video.